Welcome, thanks for coming. You are here at Two Finger Spirits. We got the camera shy camera guy. I'm over here. And I'm Brandon, thanks for coming. Today we've got Wild Turkey Rare Breed. You, you had a party with this? this is... Well, we opened it. This had time to get aerated, I guess. A little bit. All right, let's see. That's a nice dark color. But I picked this up in Maine on a vacation not too long ago. I do see it around town. I'm wondering. Yeah, yeah, this is available everywhere. I want to say I only paid like around fifty dollars for it, if that. Yeah, MSRP is fifty bucks, so you're right on target. I got my notes here. We just had a taste of this to get ourselves re-familiarized with it. So the proof is one sixteen point eight, which That's is a nice. nice it's a nice like proof. That. There. Thank sure. you so much. Let's get a little shot of this. So proof one sixteen point eight. No age statement, but they say it's a blend of six, eight, and twelve year old bourbons. Mash bill is 75% corn, 13% rye, and 12% malted barley. Hmm. That's a nice uh, light copper color, right? Yeah, that's a good copper color. Look at that spin. This has got some good spin in action. No, I wasn't you know, able to capture If we were on the other side of the earth, we'd have to do that due to the uh, Coriolis effect. Right? You're absolutely right. It's got a great nose. I got really dry oak. It has a sweet, sweet smell to it. I think that's because it's so corn heavy. It had really sweetness when I smelt it moments ago, but now that it's been open for a while, it's not that sweet. I'm getting like a dry oak. I get vanilla, citrus. I get a raisin. A little bit of raisin, but I'd say for 116, almost 117. Doesn't smell like it. What did we have the other day that like, it was a low proof, but it smelled like a high proof? Oh, yeah. I remember having that, and I don't really know the call now. I don't think we liked it either very much, did we? No, I don't think so. I get a little dry tobacco, too. You get any tobacco? I'm going to sneeze, but yes. Don't sneeze. Mm. Yeah, that's kind of my... Nice legs on it, dripping down, hugs the glass. Look at the way it cascades. Beautiful. Now this is from the Wild Turkey Distillery. Wild Turkey. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. What other bottles do they produce that, that people would not? Well, we're going to do the Russell Reserve. I think they got a cash strength of that. That's really good. Uh, not to be confused with the dog, the Jack Russell. Yeah. All right. What do you say? Let's drink this. Hmm. <laughs> Mmm. Mmm. I'd say this is extremely pleasant. That is real good. It has a, it's got a nice mouthfeel to it where you can taste the proof, but it's not a burning of the tasting of the proof. It's really dry. Mm. You know, there's a sweetness, but there's dryness as well. It's really dry. It doesn't affect the saliva, so I think it's low acidic, right? You know who loves this? Pete from the American Whiskey Experience. He, yes. He's always taught this up. He loves this. It's a great pour. And, uh, hey. It's good. I'll tell you, you know, I think it gets overlooked just because it's not the most exciting bottle. It's not the most exciting label. It's not the most exciting name. And it's kind of a misnomer. You know, they call it wild turkey. There is no wild turkeys hurt during the production of this bourbon. Are you sure? No, but kind of make the vegans feel better about drinking it. Yeah, so I get like a dry oak, dry tobacco, a little bit of brown sugar, mm. but it's still mm. dry. It's not, it's not overly sweet. My first impression of it was this is sweet. It's not very sweet. I get a little bit of cream, a little bit of caramel. And then just have to swallow a little bit of a ethanol bite, you mm. know, not not bad. A nice pleasant little little Kentucky hug, they call it, right? That's what it's called. That's what I just called it. All right. Hmm. Mm. This is really good. It's really good. I'm telling you, I think it's like super underrated. Nice long finish. Mm. I get like a, it does linger. Like a really burnt marshmallow on the finish. 
just a hint of cinnamon, like a like a dark leather sofa, you know? I got that black leather. I don't eat a lot of black leather sofas, but if I did, I bet it would taste just like this. Yeah, on the finish? Yeah. I definitely get that. We're going to have to put it in juxtaposition with a uh, black leather sofa. <laughs> <laughs> it's very nice. This is good. Um, Fred Minnick did a video recently on the uh, good replacements for the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection line. And he said in a blind tasting, this really did it for him. And uh, I, I can see why now. This is my first time really sitting down and dissecting this. And boy, this is, this is very enjoyable. I'd be interested. I bet this would beat out a lot of a lot of our favorites in a blind taste test, or a lot of our bourbons at least. We're gonna start doing more of those because um, I think it's really beneficial as a whiskey drinker to do these things blind because you are influenced by the label or price. the hype, the yep. price. So to, to you know, if you're you've got a collection of whiskey at home, have your wife pour them and put the stickers on the bottom and blind taste them and see where your palate falls. See if if you're really liking the stuff the most that you think you do, because I, I have a feeling it, it, it might change. Yeah, you'd be surprised. Yeah. And I, it's funny, because like, you know, we've done this, where we put it side by side with a couple expensive bottles, and it, they, they get beat out. Yeah, very often. Yeah. And, and there's all sorts of studies. Like there was a study about uh, Coke and Pepsi, and people swearing that they love Coke better, and in a blind taste, and they actually like the other one better. So don't, don't, don't let the, your mind play tricks on you. Keep it in stock. Yeah, I say for the price, like for the price, absolutely. the drinkability, like you can do anything with this. I say it's like for fifty bucks, it's it's a great sipper. It'd be a great mixer. Like you can't go wrong. Yeah, and I think they just updated their bottles. This is an old bottle. I hope so. But uh, yeah, I like their old bottles better than the newer ones. I know I've walked by this so many times just because it it doesn't. It's boring. Okay. It's a boring looking bottle. I like a, I like a fancy bottle. It is, you know. You know, Ben Franklin wanted this, the bird for America to be the wild turkey, and they, they said no. We want the eagle, the bald eagle. But wild turkey, man. Well, good stuff. I don't know how much you want to listen to a guy that's trying to electrocute himself. Ben Franklin was one of the greatest minds ever. <laughs> so we're gonna do Russell Reserve Single Barrel. We've got the Wild Turkey One Hundred and One coming up. You got anything else you want to add? Um, no. I, I, all I want to say is like this is something that you really should not walk by. If you have an opportunity to pick it up and you're not sure what to get, I think it's a really good buy. It's worth the money, and I think it will surprise a lot of people. Don't stop. Don't walk on by. Exactly. Mm. Who did that song? I don't know. You know, I think there was a quote. Oh, it was about, Archimedes that said... He was talking about the rare breed, wasn't he? Yeah, he said, Give me a bottle of rare breed, a lever long enough, and a fulcrum in which to place it, and I shall move the earth. I think that's a direct quote. That is exactly what he said. Exactly. I think they said. translated it because he spoke, uh, I don't know, Greek or something. I don't know, it's all Greek to me. <laughs> but, uh, hey, check us out on Instagram. Check us out on Facebook. Most importantly, check us out on YouTube. Oh. You're already here. Oh. Thanks for coming. Cheers. Yeah, like, subscribe. Comment.